Hey fabulous 7th graders, happy Thursday. Today we're going to be continuing on with our read aloud of the book Patrol. Planner reminders, you have a journal prompt that you should be working on. You should continue reading your audiobook. Remember that those need to be completed by April 30th. And then if you're on the schedule to do a Flipgrid conference with me, please make sure you do that today. If you were on the schedule to do it yesterday, that means that I have responded back to you or I'm working on responding back to you today. Um, so please just keep an eye out for that. Make sure you watch my response video. Um, and if you want to respond back, go ahead. Random tidbit, owls are the only birds that can see the color blue. I feel like I should have worn blue today. But I did it. All right, so today we're going to continue with our read aloud of Patrol. Your learning target is that authors create conflict between characters, internal traits, and the demands of the era. Your success criteria is that you can identify the central conflict of the story, and you can explain how that tension is heightened due to the time period. So as we read today, I want you to ask yourself, how do character traits and expectations of an era clash with each other in ways that cause tension? Okay, so as we read through Patrol, um, how do traits of our character, things about our character, um, clash with what is going on in the story? We're going to go through a few slides um, of stuff that came earlier in the book when we read during our first read aloud, um, just to kind of refresh our memory before we dive back in. So this part says, the land of my enemy has wide valleys, mountains that stretch along the far horizon, rushing brown rivers and thick green forests. Suddenly there is silence. We are afraid to move. We're more afraid not to move. I hear the sounds of birds again. I wonder if they speak of us from the high branches. I wonder if what they see makes them sad. The bombs explode, rumbling like thunder at a distance that is never distant enough. My body shakes. I tell myself that I will not die on this bright day. Against the horizon, columns of blue-gray smoke rise. Two clicks away, there are flashes of gunfire. Two clicks away is the distance of my enemy. My chest tightens. I wipe my sweaty palms. I bite back tears. We move again. We're always moving. Okay, so if you remember back to the first part of our read aloud, um, our character is a soldier in the Vietnam War. And so they're in Vietnam fighting, um, and he doesn't really want to be there, right? Um, he's scared, um, and he feels kind of bad about the things that are going on. So we're going to continue reading um, today. And again, I want you to pay attention to how our character's traits, so things about our character and who he is, how is that clashing with the expectations of what's going on in the story? All right. My legs ache, my shoulders sag, my thousand eyes look for death in the waving bamboo fields. A village. It is our target. We circle it. We swing around, sweeping our gun sights along the windows in the huts. We rush in behind the hollow booming of grenades. Secure the village, a sergeant calls. He points toward the enemy. The enemy, a brown woman with rivers of age etched deeply into her face. An old man, his eyes heavy with memory. And babies, babies. Little enemies crying on the mud roads. Little enemies with tears running down dusty cheeks. But I know there are other enemies. They are strong and young. I am strong and young. So let's just pause there for just a moment. What are we noticing about our character and how his traits are clashing with the expectations? Right now, the expectation is that he's fighting the enemy, but does he really seem to want to? He's paying attention to the brown woman with rivers of age etched deeply into her face and an old man, his eyes heavy with memory and babies. Does he really want to hurt these people? No. But he realizes that they're the enemy that he's supposed to fight, and he has to do his job. Let's read on. The others, they are the real enemy. They have dogs that bark at danger and wooden bowls that hold a day's rice. And my gra and grandmothers who stay stand sullen at their huts. This is my enemy. The pickup zone is just beyond a rice paddy. In the paddy, a farmer squats, waiting for the squad to pass. His stick-thin legs disappear in the shallow water, 
and it looks as if it is he who grows there. He is the harvest we must understand. A shot! I reach for the ground and scramble for cover. The elephant grass cuts my arms as I slide toward a low wall. Then there is an opening in the tall grass, and I look through. There is the enemy. He is looking at me. We're surprised to see each other. Shocked. How young he is. We stare across the distance. I know he wants me to lift my rifle to be the enemy. I want him to lift his rifle. I want him to turn away. In a heartbeat, we have learned too much about each other. The putt-putt of the chopper interrupts the moment. The enemy turns away and is swallowed by the lush grass that is everywhere in this land. I lift my rifle. I aim at the distant shadow. I am the enemy. I lower the rifle. My fingers clutch the webbing of the chopper. It strains with the weight of the squad. Below us, the land, seem, the land becomes a peaceful patchwork of greens and blues and browns. This land has wide valleys, mountains that stretch along the far horizon, rushing brown rivers, and thick green forests. And war. We land. I'm glad that I'm alive. As the heat of the day passes to the heat of the night. I write a letter to someone I love. I wonder if the enemy is writing a letter. I'm so tired. I'm so very tired of this war. Okay, so now that we're done reading through Patrol, um, are there character traits that collide with what's going on? So does our character actually want to be doing what he's doing? Does he actually want to be fighting a war? Um, what are things about him that maybe make him feel like he doesn't want to really do what he's being asked to do? And then might the resulting tension be the conflict at the heart of the story? So that tension that we felt within our character of like, I want my enemy to raise his rifle first so that I cannot feel as bad shooting him. Um, is that the conflict at the heart of the story? Is the conflict at the heart of the story that our character is struggling with the fact that he's a soldier and that he's supposed to be killing people? Is that the conflict at the heart of the story? So today your task is to complete the fourth journal entry for your historical fiction journal and then think about how those personal traits collide with outside conflict. Your journal prompt is this. Describe how character traits of the main character in your book collide with things going on in the story. So there's that internal conflict and there's external conflict. What is your character struggling with on the inside within just themselves? And then what is your character struggling with on the outside? So what things are happening in history, in their life, um, with other people that they're struggling with as well? What is the conflict internally for your character and externally? That is all I have for you today, seventh graders. Please make sure that you are journaling, that you are listening to your audiobook for about 15 minutes, um, and then that you are sending me a Flipgrid video if you're on the schedule for that today. If you have questions, as always, office hours are from 11 to 11.30 on Google Meet with the code WillisELA. Otherwise, just shoot me an email and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Have a fabulous day. I miss you all and I will see you later.